What's up, Guru Nation? Welcome back to the Clinical Trials Guru.com. Again, it's the Clinical Trials Guru.com. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, follow me on all the social networks, all that good stuff. So, today, quick video, okay? And I have to come hide in this second part of our research clinic so that I can not be distracted and just have time to talk to you guys even though it's gonna be a short video, because it's very important, okay? What are the three most important things, in my opinion, you need to worry about as a new research site owner, okay? So now this is assuming you already have a location, you already have a clinic, you already have all the equipment, and you already have a PI, because obviously those are the most important things. Uh, so let's assume you have that. And this is comes from most of my clients who hire me to help them get their sites up and running, okay? These are questions I'm getting from you guys and from my customers, okay? So three most important things that you need to worry about, in fact, the only things you need to be worried about as a new research site owner, okay? Number one, getting the studies, all right? And that shouldn't be plural, getting the studies. Get one study, all right? Followed up with number two, get patients enrolled in that study not just screened get them enrolled meaning get them randomized okay now the two are related because you want a study that you know you can enroll patients for okay so your first study that you get it's very important that if you can right now we're entering a market where there is going to be a greater supply of studies so you sort of have some more leverage a couple years ago and until recently just a few months ago this wasn't the case, we took what we can get. Now we have more control as research sites. You can be a little more selective about the studies you get. So that very first study is very important because it's gonna set the momentum for your business, right? It's gonna bring in the cash flow, hopefully, and then you can expand, which we'll get into a little bit. So number one, get one study that you can enroll patients for, which is number two. Number three, Focus on the actual protocol, number three. Do not screw up the study at all, all right? You don't wanna get a screening hold on your site. You don't wanna lose the study. You don't wanna get audited and then shut down or blacklisted by that CRO or that sponsor. Do not screw up, I almost said a bad word, do not screw up the study. That's number three, okay? After that, once you start getting cash flow, if you obey these three commandments, these three rules, cash flow will come in. You then rinse and repeat with another study, right? And then when you, there's different ways you go about this, right? If you are the site owner and you're going to be the coordinator, you don't need to worry about training a coordinator yet, okay? If you are a CRA, many of our clients are CRAs that have not quit their day jobs. So in your day job, you're a CRA, but you also own a research site and you brought in an experienced study coordinator. Then you need to rinse, train, and repeat. So for you research site owners that are actually doing the study coordinating on your first study, okay, for number three, all the responsibilities on you because you're the one that's either gonna screw up the study or not screw it up, okay? If you're a CRA who's hiring a coordinator, okay, the responsibility is still on you, but it's different because you have to train, you have to properly delegate, and then you have to make sure that they're implementing and following not only the protocol, but your own SOPs so that you obey number three, rule number three, which is do not screw up the study, right? After this, when the cash flow starts coming in, regardless of your situation, you rinse and repeat, meaning if you're working for yourself and you're doing the coordinating, you bring in another study, you do the same thing, you follow the same three rules, uh, and then you bring in more and more until you can no longer handle doing all that work, and then you hire someone to help you, right? And then you have to rinse, train, and repeat. So rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, as soon as you bring in someone else to help you, you have to add training there, okay? And then systems, SOPs, standard operating procedures, right? And same thing if you're a CRA, you're, you're, you have to involve this training aspect from the get-go, 
And if you're the business owner doing all the work, you don't need to worry about training right away until you hire somebody, right? So follow those three rules, get one study, get patience in it, and don't screw it up, all right? Thank you very much, Guru Nation. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.